Hello, I'm uh, talking to you today, clearly not from the People's Voice studio, but from home on the Isle of Wight. And that's because uh, a few days ago, uh, I, I woke up and my body basically said, you're having a laugh. And I hardly had the energy to, to breathe, let alone move. And when you get to that state, um, then if you've got any wisdom at all, you listen to what your body's telling you and you go and get it sorted out, which is what I'm in the process of doing. And the diagnosis is that I'm suffering from severe exhaustion, not a surprise to me, and a completely shot adrenal system due to overwork over a long period of time. Uh, I've been working intensely now uh, without a break for what, two and a half years or more. So that's why I'm here, putting together a television station from scratch in a few months. As other people, other people's voice will tell you, uh, takes it out of you, shall we say. And while I've been here in the last few days, uh, the people that um, look after the, the figures at TPV have told me that we are imminently going to go off air because we have, as the appeal video explains, we have a, a gap to fill between where we are and when the station becomes self-funding with advertising and with sponsorship. You will have noted that more adverts are appearing on the, uh, the output, um, but it's, uh, it's not a quick job to get that together. Although it's been happening and once again, being done like my own work and Sean's work, being done by people who are actually doing it for nothing at the moment because they care about what we're trying to do. And so that's where we are. And uh, we need to be um, honest about that. We are going off air pretty imminently, I'm, I'm told, through lack of funding. Now, people look at £300,000, the original uh, figure that we raised, and they think, oh, all those people support it, but actually that's not the case. Uh, according to the Indiegogo uh, recorded figures, the two campaigns, the one last summer, which made the station possible, and the one that's currently running, um, have had a total of about 10,000 individual donors, 10,000. And many of those people will have donated more than once, and so it's a lot less than 10,000. Contrast that with the fact that millions come for free and have done for decades to davidike.com in the knowledge, otherwise they wouldn't come, that we have a major, major problem with human freedom on so many levels and that runs so deep. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands and growing all the time have watched the output of the people's voice, the fantastic information we put to air across the, this great range of subjects. So you have millions going to davidlight.com for free. Um, that um, website was created in the late 1990s. It's now 2014. And I tell you now, I've not taken a single cent of income from that website, not a penny. It's all for free, fantastic information every day. And hundreds and hundreds of thousands have watched The People's Voice and benefited from its output and the efforts of people. Most of them volunteers and others on a wage that's nothing like they could get in the mainstream. And the number, 
that have actually donated towards the People's Voice is less than 10,000 overall. Now, to them, I say, fantastic, thank you. To them, I say, you are awake enough to see the nature of the world that we live in and thus the urgency to alert people to what's coming at them so fast and unfolding by the minute now, never mind the day. Thank you. But thank you, yes, but also people are not doing it for me. They're doing it for themselves and their children and their grandchildren and all the other people around the world who suffer mercilessly every day from the suppressions and the tortures and the oppressions of this network of grotesque families that are leading the world into a nightmare future, unless enough people wake up and take the action necessary to stop it. But I say thank you to all those people, those less than 10,000 people that have supported us with donations. And what I'm going to say from now on, clearly, clearly, does not apply to them. To the rest, who can support us financially, even in small amounts, who haven't, but are aware that the world is in the state it is and where it's heading, at least to a point, and who've enjoyed the output of the people's voice up to this point. I say this, what are you doing? What goes on in your head? This conspiracy that you are to an extent interested in, it's not a game, you know. It's not something that is like train spotting, a little add-on to life. This is about your future in what still marginally passes for human freedom. It's about the nightmare future that your children and grandchildren are going to have to live in, a nightmare you will not even yet comprehend the magnitude of. I've got this, this book, The Perception Deception. It's a thousand pages. Look at it. This is not conspiracy theory. This is documented fact. Never documented in this detail and dot connected state before. And it shows very, very clearly that it's not a game. And we are hurtling towards a society in, you will, in which you will not even have the freedom of thought, never mind the freedom of action. A world in which you will not be able to refuse to have lethal, cumulatively lethal, sometimes literally immediately lethal vaccines. You will not be able to eat food that is not genetically modified to genetically modify you and your children. You will not be able to speak your truth and give your opinion. You will not be able to gather together with others to try to protest and challenge the imposition. You will have those who have it, you will have your wealth taken away. And 
you will be in a state of slavery in which all food production is controlled and dictated by the global state, in which all access to water is the same. And if you do not serve the global state as a slave, you do not eat and you do not drink. A global state in which you and your children can be disappeared whenever the state chooses. We now have legislation passed in America that people can disappear in this way. This is not a game. This is not making comments behind anonymous logins on blogs and forums. This is not a game. Wake up. And you know it goes further. For me, when you are in some way aware of what is unfolding and what is coming to an extent, but not the full magnitude of it. And you will not contribute to help people, mostly volunteers, who are giving their time and their lives, in some cases their health, to alert people to this, so it can be stopped. That, for me, just my opinion, is a state of insanity. It has to be. Or maybe it's just sadomasochistic. Maybe people want to be slaves. Because they're going to be unless we get our freaking fingers out. I was going to say, it gets even more extreme than that. Oh, dear. It wasn't so tragic. It would be so hilarious. If um, the people's voice doesn't make it um, into the future, and at the moment it won't make it into the very, very near future, there will be people for whom this station was set up to give voice to, to give the free flow of information to, who will be cheering. Yeah, told you it wouldn't work. Yeah, that bloody hell, oh, bloody hell, good stuff. That is not a state of just your run of the mill insanity. That is full-blown clinical insanity. And when the knock comes at the door and the guy in uniform asks for their papers or asks them to, would you come along with us, please? Not that you have a choice. They will be screaming like babies for their mother. What were you doing when people were trying to alert the population to what was happening so there were no knocks on doors? Well, I was taking the piss out of David Icke and I was wishing that the people's voice would not work because I don't like him. And what were you doing? Well, I was watching. Yeah, we were all right. Yeah, quite interesting. Did you help them? Did you support them when they needed it? Well, no. But if you if you went down the pub and you ordered a round of drinks, um, what, what would you expect to get them for nothing and not contribute to the creation? Well, no. 
can't get drinks for free, can you? But information, information that would give your kids and your grandkids a better chance of living in a world of something like freedom. Oh, yeah, go get that for free, you know. And then there are um, rich people. Rich people. Do you know, I am aware of people. <laughs> it, is, it is funny because it is a state of madness. You know, I don't, I don't quote the Bible much, but there's a great line in it. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. And, and I, I try to live by that because these the people are in a state of, 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 well, of insanity, of such programming that they can't see the nature and the extent and the depth of the programming. I know of rich people. When I say rich people, I mean multi, 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 multi millionaires who watch the people's voice regularly. What have they donated? Well, the second word is uh, the second word is all. Um, and then there are the Savoy revolutionaries and what I call the Beverly Hills revolutionaries. These are the rich and famous people who have part of their persona. Oh, yeah, stand up for the people. Hey, I don't like the way the world's going. To, going. This is big brother. has gone mad. We can't have this. And they say that between negotiating their next multi-million dollar movie deal. They even go on to current affairs programs in this country, like Russell Brand, and pontificate about the need for an egalitarian society. And then he goes back to the Savoy. And back to Hollywood or wherever. Nobody of such type, mentality, fraudulent, fatulence, um, has donated anything to the people's voice of any uh, figure that's in any way significant. But they'll still go on about the fact that something must be done and the world is unfair and unjust and people need to be given a voice, ironically. And did I say flatulence just then? I meant flatulence, but you get the thing. Fraudulent flatulence. That's, the, that's what it seems like to me when I hear it. Because when the opportunity comes to actually make a difference and support people actually doing something, as opposed to waffling about it, the horizon is filled with dust caused by the rapid movement of feet. So, here we are in a situation where the world is desperate for the free flow of information to expose the way the world is being controlled and seized by the day. The way the collective cell door is slamming shut. And we have people who have put themselves on the line to create a vehicle to expose that and alert people 24 hours a day. And they've done it in months. And what they've achieved is incredible, staggering in its achievement. 
But it's coming to an end unless a very large number of asses part company with the sofa and people start putting their money where their freaking mouth is. And like I say, given, given what we're facing and the world that is being constructed, and if people think it's bad now, what? It's a tea party with Alice compared with what it's going to become if we let it happen. We can't keep a television station on the air through lack of support by enough people. And small amounts of money from a large number of people, even a fraction of those that come to davidike.com every month, even nothing like all the people that have watched The People's Voice, that would sort us out ongoing even without the advertising and the sponsorship. And we can't do that. I wonder if on consideration, people who have not supported this when they could and are happy to see it, or at least will allow it to disappear. I wonder from then on, when they complain about the loss of freedom and the lying mainstream media, and more and more viciously imposed controls in their lives and the lives of others. I wonder if those words would stick in their throat. Of course they should. Or whether they are so deeply suffering from cognitive dissonance where they can believe two things that are completely at odds, but believe them both to be true at the same time. I wonder if cognitive dissonance will get them out of trouble when they allow this to disappear through lack of support. When what we are exposing goes on getting more and more extreme. Then there's another thing, self-respect. How much self-respect is there out there? I wonder, you know. I'll tell you what I mean. If the people's voice ceases to be through lack of funding, do you know who will be laughing so much they might have to call an ambulance? They'll be laughing until they can't stand the pain no more. Who am I talking about? Of course, the people that are imposing the beyond Orwellian global fascist state. And, you know, I talk about uh, the fact that what these people do, and what these forces do, is that they'll push the gate. What I mean by that, they'll try to introduce the next stage of the Orwellian nightmare. And if they don't meet resistance from the people to that, then they'll push through and walk through the gate and go to the next gate, and then they'll do it again. And clearly, they're not meeting the kind of resistance uh, yet that would hold the gate intact. Now, let's ask ourselves this. What message does it send to those families and those satanic networks that when the people say we want a voice and some people get off their asses and make it happen, and if we stayed around for a year or so, it would be massively expanded on what it is now. 
what does it say to those people? What message does it give? That when it's put on a plate, in effect, no work necessary. Others will do that. Others will take the stress and the, the, the workload. But even on a plate, requiring only a little bit of funding from a lot of people, or a lot of funding from a few people, the people let it go. And these families would say to themselves, and quite rightly, what a freaking doddle. Not only <laughs> are we uh, not having to enslave people who want to be free, we only have to enslave vast numbers of people that clearly don't want to be free. Because they can't be bothered, even when other people are doing it. <coughs> what message does it send? That the human race does not want to be free that badly. That in enough numbers, they want to do anything about it. Even when others are doing it. They, they will be in hysterics. The Windsors, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. Hey, it's a doddle, isn't it? Is there any self-respect out there in any amount? Any self-respect that says, I will not have these people impose upon my life. I will not have them impose their grotesque will on my children and my grandchildren. I won't have it because I'll stand up to my dying day doing everything I can to make sure that doesn't happen. How much of that kind of self-respect is really out there? amid the waffle and the moaning and the ridicule and the pathetic comments. How much is really out there? We'll see in the next two or three days, won't we? So where do we go from here? The people's voice goes um, off air, disappears, what happens then? Where do we go from here? Do you know something? I've been on this road for 25 years. I've given a quarter of a century of my life to this and taken all the abuse and all the ridicule that is necessary when you put your head above the parapet and say something worth bloody hearing. But I tell you what, with all that experience, where do we go from here if that happens? I don't know. I don't know. Because it's such a statement about how people can't, in enough numbers, give a damn about their own freedom and their children and grandchildren's freedom. It is extraordinary. Looking after your kids is not buying them the latest Nike trainers. It's giving them a lifetime of freedom and free thought. That's what it is. That's the biggest gift we can give anybody. We've just forgotten because the system has us or has those that fit like that. And if the people's voice is allowed to disappear, where do I go from there? Well, I, like I say, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And what you don't do is you don't walk away from it, however disappointing, however tragic and sad things are. 
And I've been in worse situations of disappointment. Not many, mind, but some. You don't walk away. I could, you know. Um, I was um, I was trying to have a rest last summer because um, of all the intense stuff I've been doing. It, it was impacting on my health then. And then we got the idea of the people's voice. No, come on, never mind rest. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. And you, you do what, what is necessary to try to make a difference. But I could have walked away then. I could have said, oh, I'm not having that. Bloody work. I want to rest. I'm knackered. And now, people's voice disappears. I could walk away again. I could say, look, I've done my best. On your, on your way, I'm going to live the rest of my life quietly, doing what I want to do, rather than what I think is right. I could do that. I could do that today. But I won't. I will keel over at some point, still doing it, still trying to make a difference. Why? Because when you realize what's coming in its true depth and magnitude, there is no walking away. Because you walk away and you think, I've done my best. And no one can ever do more than their best. It's impossible. And then you see children and young people. I'd see my own grandchildren. I'd see my own children. I'd see people not many, not many years really younger than me, downwards to little babies coming in the world. And every time I looked at them, I'd know what was coming. I know where their lives were going because of what is planned. Can I walk away from that? Are you kidding? Never. So, we have a few days to keep the people's voice speaking. We have a few days to keep the free flow of information and expand upon it, or it will disappear. So, literally, you pay your money or you don't, and you make your choice. But if it does not make it, it will not be a failure by those that put it together. My goodness me, the achievement is stunning. Only people who've been there and seen it know that. It will be a failure of desire to keep the free flow of information, not just going, but expanding in the face of a tyranny the like of which this world has never seen in global, in, uh, global terms, in known human history. And I'm probably under, under, underestimating even that, underplaying even that, given what I know about what is planned. So, it's your choice. It's not ours. And the choice will have reverberations in so many areas of life for a very, very long time. And the choice will make a statement. Does humanity really want it to be free? Or is it doing mouse impressions? Is it just talking about it? We'll see. Adios, amigos, as they say in Japan. <laughs>